Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. The Middle East is a rich and diverse region, inhabited by a wide variety of peoples. Although most of these populations have Semitic origins and share ethnic and linguistic similarities, there are many cultural and historical distinctions among them. One particularly famous area of the Middle East is present-day Saudi Arabia, which has been inhabited since ancient times by various tribes descended from Abraham. If you think I'm talking about the Ishmaelites, you're mistaken. In this video, we'll discuss where the descendants of Abraham and Keturah are and who they are currently. To find out where they really went in the Middle East, stay tuned for this channel's content. Where are and who are the descendants of Abraham and Keturah today? We know that Abraham lived to the impressive age of 175. Although his first son was not Isaac but Ishmael, the child of promise was indeed Isaac. However, did you know that Abraham had more children and wives after the death of his beloved Sarah? And I'm not talking about Hagar. The Bible mentions another woman, who became Abraham's second wife and bore him many children. Yes, even after 100 years old, Abraham continued to have children, which may seem surprising to some, but it was common in the region and at the time. Abraham, well over 130 years old, still had several children. An interesting fact is that Isaac was already married at that time to his beloved Rebekah. However, Rebekah was barren and had no children. Abraham, even in his old age, was still having children with his second wife. But who was this woman whom Abraham took as his wife? What was her origin and where did she come from? It's intriguing to note that when Abraham sent his servant Eliezer in search of a wife for his son Isaac, Eliezer returned with a woman accompanied by servants from the region of Aram, the land of the Arameans and relatives of Abraham. The name of this woman is Keturah, an Aramaic and also Eblite name. The meaning of the name Keturah, derived from ancient Aramaic and Eblite, is promised or bound. We know that Keturah was a woman of Aramaic origin because of her name, which already indicated her ethnic origin. Many believe that Keturah came from the land of Aram, arriving with Rebekah as one of her servants or even as a lady-in-waiting, considering Rebekah's importance in the land of Aram. The land of Aram, also known as Aram, was an ancient region located in the Mesopotamian region, now part of Syria, Turkey, and Iraq. It was inhabited by Semitic peoples, mainly Arameans, who spoke a Western Semitic language. Aram was a strategic and historically important region, situated between the empires of Mesopotamia, such as Assyria and Babylonia, and the civilizations of the Eastern Mediterranean, such as the Hittites and the Egyptians. This geographical position made Aram frequently a stage for conflicts and cultural exchanges between these different powers. The Arameans were a nomadic people who had inhabited the region since ancient times, but from the 12th century BC, they began to settle in cities and form organized states. One of the most prominent Aramean kingdoms was the Kingdom of Aram Damascus, which flourished between the 9th and 8th centuries BC. Its capital, Damascus, became a prosperous city in a center of trade and culture. The Aramaic language became a lingua franca in the Mesopotamian and Levantine regions during ancient times, and its influence extended even beyond the borders of the land of Aram. Aramaic was widely used in administration, trade, and diplomacy, and it was also the language in which significant portions of the Old Testament were written. The land of Aram played a crucial role in the ancient history of the Middle East, both as a center of political power and as a cultural bridge between different civilizations in the region. Several important biblical characters have their origins associated with the land of Aram. The biblical narrative in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 1 and 2, tells the following about Abraham. Abraham took another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua, totaling six sons. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dedan, and the descendants of Dedan were the Ashurim, Latushim, and Lumim. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephor, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were descendants of Keturah. The descendants of Keturah and Abraham are often confused with those of Hagar, Abraham's Egyptian concubine. It is essential to clarify that Keturah and Hagar are distinct figures, 
with different origins, names, and meanings. Hagar was the mother of Ishmael, who gave rise to the Ishmaelites, forming twelve tribes that inhabited the region. Keturah, on the other hand, was Abraham's second wife, and her sons were Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Hagar, after leaving with Ishmael, became the ancestor of other peoples, with the Ishmaelites being her direct descendants. If you want to learn more about the twelve tribes of Ishmael, we have a video on our channel that explores this topic in detail. Hagar, after Ishmael grew up and became a strong man, married again. With this new husband, she gave birth to another people, who came to bear her name. This people, known as the Hagrites or Hagarines, are mentioned several times in the scriptures. Unlike the Ishmaelites, the Hagrites did not descend from Ishmael but were related to him. While Ishmael was a descendant of Abraham and Hagar, the Hagrites were only descendants of Hagar. We've covered the tribe of the Hagrites in a video on our channel. The scriptures mention the fate of the children that Abraham had with Keturah and what inheritance he left them. In the text of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 5 and 6, it is written that Abraham gave all his possessions to Isaac. In the case of his other sons, the text states that Abraham gave them gifts and sent them, while still alive, away from Isaac, to the east, to the land of the east. These gifts were substantial fortunes, and thus, Abraham's sons went to the region we now know as Saudi Arabia. We know it is Saudi Arabia because the territory where these tribes, descendants of Abraham and Keturah, settled corresponds to the area of present-day Saudi Arabia. These tribes, known as the Keturites or Midianites, are among the six tribes descended from Abraham. The term Midianites is used broadly to encompass all the other tribes, as they were the most prominent among Abraham's descendants, besides the Ishmaelites. Therefore, when we inquire about the fate of the descendants of Abraham and Keturah, the answer is that they settled in Saudi Arabia. The Midianites, descendants of Abraham and Keturah, are the ancestors of the Saudi Arabs. In addition to Midian, Abraham had five other sons with Keturah. Biblical texts indicate that the Midianites formed alliances with other lineages descended from Abraham. For example, the Ishmaelites, descendants of Ishmael, developed close ties with the Midianites, their relatives. Often, the Midianites and Ishmaelites are mentioned together in genealogies due to their alliances and intermarriage, demonstrating the interaction and exchange between these lineages descended from Abraham. In addition to the Midianites widely mixing with the Ishmaelites, there was also considerable mixing with the Edomites. For example, Ishmael gave one of his daughters in marriage to Esau, who became the ancestor of the Edomites. Many characters in the scriptures were descendants of the peoples descended from Keturah, who in turn were descendants of Abraham. For example, Jethro, a priest of the Most High God, the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, was one of these descendants. It is interesting to note that the Egyptians often referred to these peoples as Shesu. The Shesu were a group of people mentioned in ancient texts, especially in Egyptian records. The term Shesu was used by the Egyptians to refer to nomadic or semi-nomadic groups who inhabited the border regions of Egypt and the surrounding lands during the second millennium BCE. Egyptian records describe the Shesu as wandering people who lived in the desert regions near Egypt, such as the Sinai region and Transjordan. They are often mentioned in military contexts, as enemies or subjects of Egyptian attacks. Scholars have debated the exact identity of the Shesu and their relationship with other ancient populations in the region. Some have suggested that they could be linked to the ancestors of the Hebrews or other Western Semitic groups, while others argue that the Shesu were a collection of diverse ethnic groups who shared a nomadic lifestyle, but the truth is that these peoples were the Semitic peoples descended from Abraham. Often the Edomites and Midianites identified themselves as one of the peoples who served Yahweh, the God of Israel. I hope you enjoyed this video where I discussed the fate of the peoples descended from Abraham and Keturah, as well as talked a little about their origins. May God bless you, and see you soon.